Did anyone in particular surprise you this fall? I don't know if anybody uh, surprised me. I, I guess uh, that the, if I had to pinpoint one situation, I'd go back to the catching. Uh, Dante just did because of his back. He had a he's coming off a back injury. I wasn't sure he could, you know, do what he did the entire fall, and we kept pushing him. We, you know, we wanted to see if he was 100, percent and he answered the bell. And then, and Grayson was was as good as you can be as a true freshman. It's hard, and his maturity was beyond his years. Um, he he handled the pitchers. He didn't have a pass ball. I think he threw out maybe 50 percent of the runners that tried to go against him in our scrimmages. And he he has some certainly some offensive potential. He hit, I think, like I said, 265 or 270, but a bunch of RBIs and. I'm not worried about him offensively. I, I, I think he'll be fine. But you can't get in the lineup unless you catch well. And, and uh, he, he has done that. So going into the spring, you know, I'm extremely happy about Rosenberg and, and Griner behind the plate. David. Ray, with Matt being the potential Saturday starter, Forrest being the closer, does it give you a bit of confidence knowing that should things not work out, you can just kind of flip them back to where it was, or, or has that even crossed your mind? Well, we, you know, we talk about it all the time, and uh, you know, quite honestly, I, I don't worry too much about it because I, I've got, you know, Jerry Myers down there handling my pitchers, and it doesn't get any better than that. And he, he'll, he'll know what we need to do, and um, he, he's excited about Matt, Matt being out front. We think we got enough guys in the bullpen. Will we have a bona fide closure? Will it be Kumis? Maybe so. Uh, but again, I don't think you can discount Joey Pancake. Uh, Joel Seddon's going to pitch. He's a freshman. Evan Bill's going to pitch. He's another freshman. Both those guys had ERAs under one this fall for true freshmen. Their stuff is good. Bill was an eighth rounder. Seddon probably could have been higher had he committed to signing. But we had a couple of guys that were dedicated to coming to school. So we should be able to run some guys out there against you. And um, and Tyler Webb will be healthy, and Westmoreland's coming off a very good fall. So I, I think we have a chance to, to do what to do what we've done with the pitching staff the last couple of years, and that is keep bringing some guys against you. We don't have to necessarily rely on one or two guys, and if that fails, we're in trouble. We got I think we have some depth on our pitching staff. Coach, do you have a pretty good idea of the 30, 35-man roster? Or are you still considering a couple of spots uh, you know, from the pitching school? The good news is uh, I guess that I'm not comfortable with that. We, um, I think we're maybe there, – there's a few that are probably going to sort themselves out pretty easily, but it's not going to be it's not going to be an easy task to get to 35. We, we've got some pretty good players, and, and we've, we've got some walk-ons in this program that can play a lot of places but are here, and they wanted to be here. And um, we can – you know, you can keep guys in the program, but when you activate your 35 come February, that's it. So we don't have to be in such a big hurry. Uh, that being said, you want to be fair to your players. So between now and the end of the semester, I'll have meetings with every single player individually, and we'll, we'll kind of let them know the way we see them, where, they're, where they are on the depth charts, and, and evaluate their falls. And you may get one or two that you know, seek opportunities to play, and other guys that, that you know, will be comfortable with their position. So that could affect how we get down to 35. But it's not an easy task to do that right now. Can you can you measure the impact of having Michael Roth back? Not only was he dominant all season long last year, but just the, his personality and the fact that he keeps the team loose and, he, and he's a leader in his own, own way out there. You know, that's uh, one of the joys, I think, of, of being a coach when you have to, you have an opportunity to coach a guy for four years, three or four years, and in his case, this is his fourth year, and they they take charge of your program. And, uh, you know, it's it's been it's been great, really. And then we've got some other guys that are good leaders, but certainly when Roth tells everybody, come in here, they all respond. And whatever he says, they listen to. Uh, you know, I... A few weeks ago, you know, with our football scheduling, games changing and TV dictating start times for football, we, we practice during those times and we, we never practice at the same time the football team's playing. But um, years ago, I make all those decisions. Now I don't. Michael Roth makes those decisions. You know, he, he gets with his teammates and he says, hey, let's, uh, 
our football games at 12:15, our football games at 7:15. Let's let's do our practice schedule this way. And they tell me, this is how we're going to do it. And I go, sounds great. Um, but that, that's a that's a joy to have those kind of guys that you know that it's their program. They care about it, and that's the way they play. That it's about the name on the front, and um, that's great for me. You touched on it a little bit a minute ago, but talk about your freshman pitchers, the two you mentioned in Jordan Montgomery, and how difficult it is to come in and perform as well as they did um, as a freshman in fall ball. Well, the three, the three freshman pitchers that, that I was referring to, Joel Seddon, the right-hander out of Michigan, and, and Evan Bill, the right-hander out of, uh, I think, Fairfax, Virginia, and then Jordan Montgomery out of Sumter. You know, Jordan's a lefty, and he, he's, he's, he's got a great chance to develop the kind of change up that, that Michael Roth has been able to use since he's been here. And uh, then Joel said, and he's got, he's, he's got really, really good stuff, so does Bill. Bill has a plus breaking ball, and those, those guys are, are outstanding recruits, and that's one of the reasons that our recruiting class was ranked as high as it has been, is because of guys with that kind of ability. But uh, they, they, they will pitch, and their composure's been good. I think, like I said, uh, Bill, and said and both had ERAs under one this fall. Jordan's was a little bit higher, but um, those guys are really, really good, and they're going to get an opportunity to throw. But they had that success. So in their first semester, are you surprised by that? You know, I, you hate to say you're surprised, but I've been doing this for a while, and it's tough on freshmen. The transition, the transition is very, very difficult. You know, the, the speed, the conditioning, the weight room, and – and all the things that you go through as a true freshman, sometimes they have to take a couple of steps backwards before they can go forwards. Their velocity drops off because we're paralyzing their bodies a little bit. They don't feel as good all the time as, as they would like to. <clears throat> so their, their success, I, I think, is, says a lot about who they are and, and their confidence and their ability to make adjustments early on in their career. And that's impressive. And, and I, I, I I'm comfortable saying that, that especially with Bill and Seth, and they'll tell you that you know, a couple of their outings weren't as good as they wanted them to be, but yet their stuff was good enough to keep them from getting in too much trouble. Coach, you've been through fall practices a couple of times and won national championships. Does this team, to you, feel like a national champion contender? I don't know about all that, but I, you know, I, I never felt like the other two years that it was that case either. You, you just go out and you, you work at it and you try to be as good as you can be. Um, college baseball is very, very good. The SEC is the best. There's so many teams that, in my estimation, could be national champions at the end of the year. Just based on our conference with people that emerge that get a chance to go to postseason, you're good enough to win. I think it's been indicated by the success of Southeastern Conference baseball. So I, I know that how difficult it is. And and you, you you have to be very, very special as a team, not only with your ability, but how you play and how you approach everything and to have a chance. And that's that's all we're trying to do. You you've heard me say this many times. I, I don't get we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. We're trying to put a good team on the field that can get to the postseason. And that's enough. That's enough. You, you, it's grueling. It's hard. It's tough for us to get to the SEC tournament. It, it's very, very difficult to be one of the eight teams. That being said, if you're one of the eight, you may have a chance to be in the final eight. I mean, that's how good the conference is. So it, it's uh, very, very difficult to, to be one of the, the best teams in the country at the end of the year playing through the SEC. Any other questions for Coach Tanner? Sorry, it's a little centralized, but just how about the way that uh, Kyle Martin and uh, the uh, uh, other kid from up there, drawing a blank now. <laughs> no, no, not Pancake, uh, uh, Mullen, Reed Mullen. Uh, well, Reed's not quite ready, and of course he's behind behind some guys in the outfield that have a lot of experience. So, you know, Reed, Reed, Reed won't get an opportunity this year, but he's a guy that we liked enough out of high school to, to get him into the program. He's got a chance to swing it a little bit. He's worked hard to become a better outfielder. Kyle Martin I'm extremely pleased with. Um, it's difficult for, for Kyle and Bryson Selleck, the two guys behind Christian Walker at first. Christian arguably is our, our best pure hitter. 
and uh, he's going to certainly get his his chances. And and you got Kyle Martin from the left side and Bryson Selleck from the right side behind him. Both of them swung the bat pretty good at times. But Martin, if you remember, you might have uh, might have seen at the end of the summer he was in the big league World Series. He pitched and he hit, and uh, and they won it all. He. Um, He's got a chance to, to do a good job, maybe get some at-bats as a freshman and, and could be the heir apparent to Christian Walker at first base. He's very good around the bag for a big guy. He's, uh, I don't know, 6'3", 6'4", with tremendous power. Um, despite the change in bats, he can he hits them a pretty good way. So we're, we're excited to have him in the program. He's done a really good job. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, thank you all.